Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I want to do a bit of a trade breakdown um, on the Euro Swiss. And it was a uh, trade that I did some analysis on and um, for the private members Discord group. And if you do want to join the mentoring uh, Discord group, um, you can go to the website. It's going to be uh, um, only available until the 2nd of April and uh, check out trading180.com so um yeah the euro swiss and um in the group um who have access to this to this page trading videos page what i do is i put you know i post pretty much you know videos um you know daily videos or if not every other day uh, we do analysis um, weekly analysis on not just technical and fundamental analysis but uh you know from psychology and just basically what's generally going on in the market i've got pretty much hundreds of thousands of videos right um, over the years um, and if you type in for example weekly and you can get all the you know it's all keywords searched etc um, if you type in for example inflation right and you want to know about inflation we've got tons of videos on the on the inflation for example that you know is uh, an hour 29 minutes 13 minutes 21 13 an hour 41 you know minutes so got plenty and plenty of education in there for you guys anyways euro swiss right so it was it was a level in the euro swiss that worked out really really well and um on the on our weekly technical analysis which is not part of the youtube uh, technical analysis again this is private members um I did some analysis on on the Euro Swiss, and I just wanted to kind of break it down and, and let you see uh, what the analysis was and uh, how the trade worked out. And again, I um, in this uh, uh, video uh, and the many videos that I do, I don't necessarily uh, do trade calls or anything like that. I'm just letting traders know the trade setups that I'm interested in, and. Um, and uh, yeah, I go through the analysis in depth, etc. So, um, so yeah, let's have a look at this. So it was on the 21st of March, weekly technical analysis. And uh, if we go to, I think it was 25.05, somewhere around here. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in a bit, right? And then we'll, we'll also see the results afterwards. And obviously you can have a look at the result afterwards uh, on your own charts. But this is, you know, the video. And uh, let's press play. Yeah, so all these traders down here are going to be caught. Level, level, then the breakout traders get involved, retracement traders get involved, pulls back a little bit, probably more retracement traders get involved in there, probably getting in short on a, on a little bit of a pullback. If you probably look at this area here, there, drag it left as well. You can see that it is a bit of an intraday level. Let's go down to the 15 minute. Yeah, you see it's held there, held there, rejected there, held there, rejected there. So you can see where traders were definitely going short at that level as well. Again, that level there to there being some sort of retracement, probably 50% around here, thinking that's a fib. So anyone who's got in short there, they've been caught. Anyone who's got, they've been relieved a little bit here though. So uh, let's see, but I do think this pretty trade is definitely caught in and around this zone to the downside retracement traders and then all of a sudden it's flipped on them. So I do think that that 108 level on that Euro Swiss, I think that coincides with that daily, that daily demand zone as well, yep. It all coincides with that. So let's see. there right so again uh, that 10206 to 1018 is what I think I was referring to in the uh, in the video on the euro Swiss and again this was recorded 
on the uh, 21st of March. Today that I'm recording this video is the 1st of April, um, April Fool's Day, I guess. But um, let's go to the Euro Swiss. And this was really, again, the setup, right? So um, again, the analysis really is understanding supply and demand um, you know, from a really kind of higher level and, and, and why there are likely to be uh, more demand orders than supply or more supply orders than demand at a certain level. That's really, you know, the high degree and the high level um, understanding of, of why a level is likely to, um, you know, react at that level. Of course, you want to always trade in line with the fundamentals. And fundamentally, um, you you know, I was, I was probably more bullish on the euro I said probably, but I was more bullish on the euro than the uh, than the Swiss franc. Um, I thought that there would be, you know, an agreement, for example. And I know we are. It looks like we're in a risk-off environment, but the euro. Um, there were signs that potentially the euro at the time, um, you know, was the buy, and that was really my uh, my bias. Again, the guys in the group uh, know this. I've been, I've been saying it for a couple of weeks, anyways. So understanding why, um, you know prices are likely to bounce at levels and it, it did and literally you know went uh, to the upside right so it bounced around here again it's just understanding who um, you know is caught in their positions uh, and also as well the, the, the supply and demand equation around here and why someone you know you think to well why is it important that someone is caught around here it's because if they assumed that the market was going to go lower around here they basically selling yeah and a lot of traders who um uh, suffer from loss aversion bias and loss aversion bias is a real thing and what loss aversion bias does is that it, it's basically it's um a bias where uh pain feels worse than gains feel good and traders generally will m move and remove their stop losses um and by moving and removing their stop losses, they get caught in their positions because if you've done it, and I know I've done it, you know, many years ago, it, you know, you, do, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to accept that loss and you move your stop loss and then all of a sudden your unrealized loss starts getting, you know, more and more and more and more. Um, and you're seeing rather than losing 1% of your account, you're losing 10, 15, 20%, 30% prices don't go back. You even add into trades and it goes against you, right? But, um, and this is really the, the, the height of maximum pain right this is if you haven't blown your account already um after moving your stop loss you really what you're doing is you're praying for prices to come back down to an area where you can get out at you know either a small loss or a break even and as i said before um if you sold here if you sold here to exit that trade you have to buy yeah there are also new traders getting involved in that level of support right obvious levels of support where um loads of traders are going to get in right and they're also going to buy so you've got buying from the cpr traders right uh, traders being caught gone through pain and now want some relief right from exiting their trade you've got and that's a, a buy order you've got new traders getting involved at a level of support that's another buy order and also as well uh, traders who sold and got short at the top of the market or anywhere around these areas here on pullbacks where they're looking to take profit yeah they've got to take profit at what is known as problem areas where where in the past prices went higher and what better place to take profit yeah than uh, at a level where prices may go higher so they were they were correct if they took profit somewhere around here um you know and taking profit around a level of support because prices actually went higher but for, for, from our perspective yeah uh, and the trade breakdown this is what i was talking about right that was the zone that i was on about yeah so you can see pretty much zooming in prices you know there was a few pips in that so I'm not saying that everyone got in on absolute low and got out at absolute higher, but there was at least 190 pips involved in that move, right? And again, fundamentally, we understand that, you know, uh, at the time, um, you know, probability, the probabilities um, of us buying the euro, or the euro being a bargain, a bit of a bargain, or the market assuming that the, that the euro was a bargain, because ultimately it comes down to what the market thinks about price valuation, which is uh, derived from fundamental analysis and risk sentiment, um, you know, and, and what the market thinks. And obviously the market agreed that that level, right, on March the 25th was a bargain. And I'd done the analysis 
on March the 21st, which was somewhere around here, right? So understanding that level, understanding um, you know, the, the supply and demand equation technically was going on in alignment with fundamental analysis, lots of pips to be made. And again, if you do want to, you know, find out lots of uh, capture pain relief um, uh, trade setups that we trade in the uh, in the group uh, you have until really April the uh, 2nd uh, tomorrow really if you're watching this on April the 1st until tomorrow to, to join after that we're closing uh, for the foreseeable future so guys um, take care and uh, I'll speak to you all soon